Welcome back to another YouTube video and today I will be showing you some SEO tips that you can be doing on your website. Make certain to continue watching to the last tip because that is by far the most important one that a lot of people aren't actually doing nowadays. Before we get into this video, make certain to check out cadradash.com where you can book me out for a free 15 minute strategy call and I can go over how you can grow your organic traffic for your website. Tip number one is actually including LSE size on the page. Now, what a lot of people basically do is they only take a look at their main keyword in their H1 and they're not actually including any of the secondary keywords that's actually ranking on that page. Now, for example, this is our page for the biggest cities in the UK. And as you can see here, largest city in UK by area. We actually get 255 clicks over a three month period. We've had 11,000 impressions for that keyword, but we don't actually even have it on the page. So just by adding it onto the page, if we do have certain secondary keywords that we are in positions three or four, or potentially on page two for, adding it onto the page, it will essentially help us improve the actual rankings, mainly because Google is ranking for the secondary keywords has given us that little bit of trust, but we don't even have it on the page. So what I would be looking to do here is sorting by impressions highest to lowest, and then working through this list. If there are certain keywords that essentially get a lot of impressions, I would look to have them in more prominent positions. So for example here, if we take a look at largest city in UK by area, we have had 255 clicks for it. We've also had 11,000 impressions over a three month period, as we can see here. Now, what I would be actually looking to do is having this in a prominent area. So largest city in UK by area, because it gets so much impressions and also so much clicks as well, I would be looking to have this as a subhead and so potentially a H2 or even a H3, mainly because I'm basing it off of the actual amount of clicks and impressions it's getting. If, say, for example, it was only getting 500 impressions, I would just add it into the actual main body content just as a regular sentence or potentially a regular paragraph. Um, I wouldn't be worried about actually having it as a H2. Tip number two is to actually use multimedia, not just have big blocks of content. So, for example, what I mean by multimedia is you can have HTML tables, you can have numbered lists, you can have bullet pointed lists, you can also have infographics, videos and TikToks and shorts on your actual page. Now, what I will be doing in the next couple of days is I will have a video on the reason why I have included a infographic on this page. However, when you actually have infographics on your pages, so for example, this is to do with the biggest cities in the UK, full breakdown, we're talking about potential areas that you can essentially rent and it basically goes into detail as to where you should be written and it's very relevant to this page but when you have infographics you are also impacting the off-page SEO as well because there are certain websites that will be looking for infographics to do with the biggest cities and if they find your actual infographic they will link back to you so you're also getting some links but then again you are also including dwell time on the page as well so for example somebody might be taking a look three or four minutes on this actual infographic and they will essentially impact your dwell time on the page. And overall, it's just gonna improve the actual rankings for this page. You're not just ranking the page at that point, you're also ranking in Google Images. You can also do Pinterest traffic as well to this infographic. So you're focusing on a variety of different search engines at that point as well. So tip number three is internal linking with LSIs in prominent areas. So what I mean by that is, we obviously have the biggest cities in the UK. Now, let's Let's say the largest city in UK by area, obviously we don't actually have that on the page, but we also want to internally link it from other UK related pages as well. So what I'd be looking to do here is potentially doing a command such as site colon fat rank and then space UK. So obviously we have got our main article up here, but we actually have an article to do with the UK top 100 entrepreneurs. We also have successful UK entrepreneurs you may not have heard of as well. So what I would be looking to do here is find in prominent areas that we can essentially internally link from. So what I mean by prominent areas is 
internal links further up the page actually hold more weight. So if we were to have an internal link here, let's say going through to our biggest cities in UK page, it's going to have a lot more weight than an internal link halfway down this page. And same goes with internal links that are in sidebars as well. So we do have a few sidebar links here, but they aren't actually deemed as contextual links. So we need to be internally linking from actual prominent areas. And we should also be looking at theming the page. So don't always just use exact match anchors. So if I'm trying to rank for biggest cities in the UK, what I'm looking at is my Google search console. And the last thing I want to be doing is just internally linking from 500 pages on my website with the exact same anchor as biggest cities in UK. What I would actually be looking to do is having a variety of different queries and using these as internal anchors, because at the end of the day, Google's telling you, look, these are the impressions that you're getting. This is what the page is about. So you should be essentially theming this page with your internal anchors and also with your backlink anchors as well. So if you're actually doing any form of guest posting or niche edits or link insertions, look at your Google search console and pick your anchors that way. Last tip is actually focusing on topics and not keywords. So for example, this website here, it actually ranks for business lawyer number one in the UK. And what they have actually done is they have covered the topic in its entirety. So they have got business solicitors page that obviously ranks number one for business law, but then they have also broke down all of the services that they provide within business law as well. And they also have dedicated pages for every single type of sector that they help. So for example, consumer businesses, education, financial and professional services, manufacturing. If you actually click on view more sectors, they have a few more. Same with the actual services that they offer as well. So what they have done very well is that they obviously are just lawyers. This website here, they provide a lot of different services. They don't just provide business law, but when they are talking about business law, they have went to town when it comes to all of their topics. They also have a lot of blog articles as well to do with business news and business law. So if you guys are trying to rank a website in 2024, this is by far the most important tip. Keyword research isn't as important, so you shouldn't just be chasing after search volume. You should actually be looking to cover the topic in its entirety and then go on to the next subject at hand. So that has been my on-page SEO for 2024. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. And if you want a free 15-minute strategy call, make sure to check out casual-dash.com. The link is in the description. Thanks.